Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Connection with the beginning of my Marvel Hero Clicks X-Men Rise and Fall unboxing series. Now, for this set we're actually going to try something a little different. We're going to start off with what I refer to as a primer. So the primer will uh, basically be talking about the themes of the set as well as uh, Maybe some changes in the set as well. Uh, so first off, uh, X Men Rise and Fall is based upon. It, it, obviously, it's an X Men set, but it's based. It draws heavily from the Ed Brubaker uh, story, Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire, which appeared in uh, Uncanny X Men, short about a year or so after the end of House of M. Maybe less, actually. I I could, but uh, in the story, well, for all. Oh, First, Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire was also served as a continuation of Brubaker's miniseries um, X-Men Deadly Genesis, which Punch picked up right after uh, House of M. Um, in, in Deadly Genesis, we learned that um, before putting together the all-new, all-different X-Men squad, Professor X sent a squad of uh, team of students... Um, who had been trained by Moira McTaggart to save the original five X-Men from Krakoa, and they apparently were killed. Um, with the exception of... Uh, with, eh, and so, when all the... When Scarlet Witch depowered most, the vast majority of the mutants, the energy that was from that went off into space, and hit Krakoa, which had been sent into space at the end of the giant size X-Men. This awakened one of the uh, one of Moira's students, Gabriel Summers, aka Vulcan. Um, Vulcan returned, um, but it turns out he also had he had because um, his teammate Darwin was uh, basically kind of hiding within it, had kind of bonded with him. He also had the powers of, uh, basically had the powers of, of, of the rest of, of the other two students as well. Um, when he learned the truth, when he learned various things, you know, the Shi'ar, you know, about, like the Shi'ar, so on and so forth, he went off into space. So Xavier put together a team of X-Men to go back, go chase uh, Vulcan into space. Uh, that team consisted of himself, Havoc, Polaris, Warpath... Darwin and Nightcrawler. Oh, and uh, and Rachel uh, Gray, Rachel Gray, aka Phoenix, aka Marvel Girl. Um, currently, don't ask prestige. Uh, so yeah, during the story, uh, um, Gabriel would kill Emperor Deke. Well, first Emperor Deke would be re uh, revived from his coma, and. Vulcan would kill him and assume the role of Emperor himself. Um, Corsair would be killed, um, and Havoc, Polaris, and Marvel Girl would be stuck in Shi'ar space and would become. Havoc would take over leadership of the Star Jammers while uh, Hepzibah ended up on, on Earth. Also, we got the repowering of Xavier, uh, who ended, as he ended up uh, in toss of the Emcron Crystal at one point. So, uh, now some differences with the set. Um, first off, uh, if you've watched any of these any of these previously, you probably you've seen me pull primes from every rarity, common, uncommon, rare, and super rare. Um, starting with this set, well, actually starting with Wonder Woman. Uh, the last click set, they uh, WizKids opted to stop doing common primes. Uh, in fact, Wonder Woman 80th anniversary had two uncommon primes and a rare prime and an, uh, and an uncommon or and a super rare prime. Starting with this set, we don't even get an uncommon prime anymore. Instead, we get two rare primes and two super rare primes. Um, and I think they're going. They're, if I'm if I'm understanding what people are saying correctly, the distribution is technically one per case. Uh, same with the uh, chases, which are which are the X Men inspired Infinity Warps characters. We also have an Ultra Chase to celebrate Deadpool's 30th, 30th anniversary. We 
well, hopefully we can pull that. Be, it'd be it'd make for a nice. Uh, it'd, it'd make for a nice uh, finale, you know. And as with uh, Future Foundation and Wonder Woman 80th Anniversary, we have legacy cards again, which we will get to uh, at at the end with the uh, Fast Forces and Fast Forces Dice Token Kit and um, the Play at Home Kit. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Um, also, the primer. Oh, that's another thing. Also, the primer. We will be looking at. I'll be looking at any figures I've, bought, I've picked up before doing the unboxing. Say stuff from my, from the sealed, sealed game, um, or just random loose boosters I picked up beforehand. So yeah, we'll get started off that. We've got Wolverine. Wolverine comes in at forty-five points. Has the X Men ability as well as. The Avengers, he gave school for higher learning, Weapon X, and X-Men keywords. Uh, he also has a trait, Rally. Now, Rally is a new uh, traded ability. Uh, a lot of figures in the set have, the ra have Rally. However, I'm not, it will not be covered in a shared trait uh, spotlight because it's more of, a, of an ability, if that makes sense. Um, the way it works is, um, for, for the figures in this set with it, if an opposing attack roll includes a five in it uh, you get to put a rally die on a, a character's card with rally uh, so Wolverine's rally trait uh, grants him regeneration and when he uses it before rolling the d6 you may instead remove the rally die and, to use it as the result okay that's actually there's actually quite a few uh, rally traits similar to that um, I think there's a blades claw. I think some. I'm pretty sure someone's got blades. Uh, I know Xavier's got that with leadership, so on and so forth. Uh, looking at his dial, we open up with some charges. We get some late, some late dial flurry. We got a four on a blades, four on a toughness, and a four on exploit weakness. Uh, for 45 points, it's not bad, like at all. Hell. The lowest his attack gets is a ten, and that's mid dial. And uh, on his on his last click, he's at a twelve. So yeah, yeah, that is okay. Uh, moving on though, we've got Darwin. Darwin, Darwin is not an easy character to uh, adapt, in my opinion. He uh, his whole power is that he adapts. So, and how do you do that in a game where the whole point is to take damage? So anyways, Darwin comes in at 30 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the X-Factor X and X-Men keywords, and he has a trait. Instant de defensive adaptation. Opposing characters targeting only Darwin with an attack can't have their attack or damage value positively modified. Darwin has safeguard, pulse wave, poison. Okay, all right. Looking at his dial, he has four clues for generation at the tail end. That's it. That is literally all he's got for 30 points. Yeah. Next up, we've got Warpath, who was... Uh, I'm actually... Even though I didn't get to use him much in a sealed event, um, he still kind of impressed me. Uh, I, I, I like Warpath already, but yeah, they, I'm, I'm actually impressed here. So Warpath comes in at 50 points, has the X-Men team ability as well as the Hellions, New Mutants, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, and Warrior keywords. He also has a Rally trait, um, grants him Stealth. Uh, as a free action, you can remove his Rally die to make a range attack with a with a 5 range, and I believe it's improved targeting or its hindering trait. That's nice, and I wish I had I wish I had remember, picked up on that uh, you know, during the games I played with him. Next up, we've got Havoc. Finally, we get a new sculpt for Havoc. It's not the greatest sculpt, but, you know, it's better than that same sculpt we had since 2013. It's, uh, at least, it's nice to have a new sculpt for him there. Havoc comes in at 35 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Star Jammers, X-Factor, and X-Men keywords. Rally, um, when Havoc uses Energy Explosion, you may replace a D6 of the attack roll with, the, with his Rally die. Okay. Um, looking at his dial, we get a couple clicks of running shot and some sidestep and a full run of energy explosion. And that's it. 
Um, I'm going to say, not impressed with booster with the booster uh, havoc. Next, we'll be our first generic, Hellfire Club Guard. Yeah, Hellfire Club Guard. This guy comes in at uh, 25 points, I believe. Yeah. It's got the Hellfire Club and Soldier keyword as well as a trait. We have names, you know. Adjacent friendly characters with the Hellfire Club keyword can use Mastermind, but only to, cho to choose Hellfire Club Guard. Okay. Uh, now we get, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, Seagull Building the Team, we've got kind of sort of two separate dials. So the primary dial, get a few clicks of running shot, and some sidestep, penetrates like a blast on attack, followed by energy explosion, then incapacitate, and a click of toughness on defense. Now, we've got this other dial. If he's brought, it, this keys off of one of the super rares in the set, Blackheart. We have a special speed power, demonic transformation, which grants flight, charge, and flurry. Got Blades, Claws, Fangs on attack, toughness on defense, and exploit weakness on damage. Okay. Alright. Either that, because of that, uh, it's actually one of the cases of a lot of people wanting that to have multiples of him for Blackheart. Next up, we've got Multiple Man. Multiple man comes in at 40 points or 10 points. He has the X-Men and Underworld keywords, their team abilities, as well as the Hydra, Magia, Shield, X-Factor, X-Men, Detective, and Spy keywords. Two traits. First off, Reabsorption. Multiple man isn't a standard character, meaning he can't be equipped. If Multiple man started the game on click number 9, he has a zero point value for all effects, including scoring. Protected Pulse Wave. Okay. Next, we're going to click number nine. That's what comes into play. Creating new dupes. Multiple man takes a maximum of two damage from attacks. Whenever multiple man takes damage during your opponent's turn, after resolutions, generate a multiple man on click number on click number nine. Damage taken is, and there's an explosion of what damage taken is. This and. And the trait is protected from Pulse Wave, so it still keys off a of Pulse Wave. So looking at uh, his dials, first off, the primary dial starts off with, you know, click of stealth on stealth on speed, on moot, on attack, we have nothing at first, but then seal energy for the rest of the dial, toughness for all, the entirety of his dial on defense, leadership for a few clicks on uh, damage, followed by a couple clicks of close combat expert. As for the other dial, the dupe dial, we've got plasticity, incapacitate, Toughness and empower. Okay, all right. Next up, we've got the Sentinel. Sentinel, uh, the Sentinel, Sentinel here comes in at uh, 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 yeah, twenty-five points. Has the Sentinel arm, armor and robot keywords and two traits. Responding to the mutant threat. Sideline active. Once during your opponent's turn, if they hit with three attacks or two attacks made by characters with the X-Men keyword, after resolutions you may place a sentinel from your sideline on click number one in your starting area. Okay. That's... That's kind of nuts, actually. I mean, yeah, sure, we've got plenty, we've got all those uh, leaders that, you know, hey, yeah, Leadership. Hey, hey, if they if they succeed, instead of doing doing the normal thing, you can put a generic in play. No, no, no. This guy's like, no, no, no. Hey, oh, did your opponent hit with three attacks? Oh, two two attacks with from an from X Men. <laughs> okay, yeah, Sentinel. And it gets better. The second one, return for repairs. When Sentinel is KO'd, instead of putting it in your KO area. Turn them to their starting line and add them to your sideline. They're still scored. So basically, you could put out a Sentinel, have it attack, have it get KO'd, goes back to your sideline. X, two X Men characters make attack, hit with attacks, up, oh, Sentinel's back. Looking at his dial, we've got some sidestep on speed, incapacitate on attack, click on the vulnerability, followed by a couple clicks of toughness on defense. Okay. Next up, we've got the Shi'ar Soldier. 
Shiar Soldier comes in at uh, 20 points as the Shiar and Soldier keywords. We've also got a trait for the Empire. Power. Generate a Shi'ar flag light object. Okay. There's no... Uh, I don't think the guy does what that is, but yeah. If it, don't, if it does anything special, but presumably not. There are effects that mention them, but that's all. Looking at this dial, we get a click of running shot, a couple clicks of sidestep on speed, on defense, a click of toughness, followed by a couple clicks of energy deflection, and on damage, we had a couple clicks, mid and, mid and late dial of uh, empower. Okay. Next up, we've got Raza. Now, this was actually kind of one of my dis the disappointments me on the set. The Star Jammers. So, I kind of feel like we got the perfect start version of the Star Jammers in House of X. Not to say these guys are bad, but they're just, it's just so close. And yeah. Anyway, so Raza comes in at 35 points. He has the Star Jammers, Pirate, and Robot keywords. And he has the trait Salvage. Uh, we, Again, like Rally, it's very much a, uh, a trade ability, more so than trait than it's a shared trait. And apparently all the Star Jammers have it. But free, if Ra Raza occupies or is adjacent to a hindering terrain, roll a D6 and place it on this card. Maximum one. If Raza has a die, die on this card, he modifies by plus one the combat va value, value matching the number on the die. When he makes an attack after resolutions, remove the die. Okay, all right. Um, let's say three and four is attack, five is damage, six is attack and damage. Okay, all right. I think. Let's see. Does Hepsivar? Okay, yeah. Salvage works the same. It, it does. It's not like there's not. Well, you don't have speed and attack or speed and defense. No, it's attack and damage. Okay. Looking at his dial, we get a click of uh, running shot followed by two of charge, full run of blade slots fans, and a full run of toughness. For 35 points, I will say he's not bad. And uh, I could definitely see myself using him. So, yeah, you know. I, I still kind of think that the uh, one from House of X is better. But it it's not terrible, at least. So, you know. Next up, we've got Smasher. Smasher comes in at uh, ooh, got two different values there. 100 points or 30 points. Has the Imperial Guard, Shi'ar, and Soldier keywords. With all the trait Exospecs Technology. Free. Choose a listed power to use this turn, then roll a d6. On a 5 or a 6, you may choose a, an additional listed power to use this turn. This is listed power is being charge, flurry, quake, poison, exploit, we just said in power. Okay. Um, looking at his dial, we've got a full run of sidestep, full run of toughness, and a full run of close combat expert. Okay, all right. I can see uh, charger flurry being very useful here. Or, if you're already based, flurry and exploit weakness. At least you're up against, you're based by someone with reducers. Not too shabby. Next up, we've got Colossus. Always love a good Colossus figure, and this one does not disappoint. Colossus comes in at 75 points or uh, 50 points. He's got the X Men team ability as well as the Excalibur, Utopia, X Force, X Men, and armor keywords. We also have improved movement, ignores and destroys blocking terrain, and he has a rally trait. Um, he has impervious, or when he uses impervious, he can remove his rally die to use that as a result. Looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of charge, followed by a few clicks of uh, sidestep. A couple clicks of quake on attack, followed by a few clicks of blaze claws fangs. A full run of the special power, huh, your best was not enough which grants t impervious and is protected from outwit. Okay. Then on damage, we open up with some empower, followed by a few clicks of close combat expert. All right. Normally, uh, it used to be I would probably 
applaud the fact that you've got close combat expert with side step instead of charge, but now with the changes, I do kind of wish that the empower and the, and the close combat expert was swapped, but he's still opening up the four damage, so I'm not that worried. I'm not that, you know, it's, it's like, okay, that's it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, moving on to our next figure, we've got Brood. Totally, totally not Marvel's riff on the uh, Xenomorph. Totally not. I mean, it totally is, but, you know. Anyway, so Brood comes in at 15 points. It has the Brood, Animal, and Monster keywords. And, of course, for 15 points, we get a short dial. Three clicks, we get Stealth, followed by a couple of the sidestep. Blaze Claws Fangs, followed by a couple of Poison. A couple of Toughness. And then on, at the end, a blank click on damage and two clicks of exploit weakness. Okay. Next up, we've got Blob. I like the sculpt, I'm not going to lie. And it very much feels like a Krakoan Blob, sculpt wise. Dial wise, not so much. And the dial, hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, Blob comes in at 50 points, has the Brotherhood Team Ability, as well as the Brotherhood Mutants, Freedom Force, and Brute Keywords. Looking at his dial, we get a full run of size up on speed, nothing on attack, an almost full run of Impervious on defense, followed by a couple clicks of regeneration at the end, and a full run of Close Combat Expert. It's not bad. It, it's a good, it, it's a good attacker. It's just... It's, it's, kind, of, it's one, kind of one of those... The X-Men animated uh, Blob from a few years ago kind of nailed it, in my opinion, when it comes to Blob. But, yeah. Anyway, moving on, we've got the Skinless Man. He looks like an Eldritch Horror. Skinless Man comes in at 30 points, has the Brotherhood Team Ability, as well as the Brotherhood Mutants and Weapon X keywords. Uh, very short dial. Plasticity on speed, blades on attack, special power on defense, elastic body horror, which grants toughness and super senses. When Skinless Man uses super senses and succeeds, after resolutions, you may give an adjacent opposing character an action token. I like that. I really like that. Next up, we've got Cyclops. Oof. Cyclops here comes in at 45 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Utopia and X-Men keywords. He also has a rally trait. Um, when a friendly character uses the X-Men team ability before rolling the D6, you may instead remove Cyclops' rally die to use that as a result. Okay. And it's just a friendly character, not an adjacent friendly character or friendly character within line of fire. And also, the just being a friendly character, it could be him. So, yeah. Looking at his dial, uh, we get a few clicks of running shot, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. On attack, we've got a few clicks of Penetrate Psychic Blast, followed by a couple clicks of Energy Explosion. Defense, we give a full run of energy, of energy Deflection. On damage, we open up with the special power, like we practice X-Men, which grants Enhancement and Leadership, followed by a couple clicks of just regular Enhancement. Okay, alright. I'm digging it. Definitely worth a 40... I would actually say worth more than 45 points, but hey, you know. Let's just not mention that. Next up, we've got the Silver Samurai. I love how they're using the Krakoan design, except that there's really nothing that kind of points to him being Silver Samurai as he is on Krakoa, dial-wise. So Silver Samurai comes in at, 80, at 65 points, has the Hydra, the Hand, Armor, Martial Artist, Mystical, and Warrior keywords. Most of a trait, Teleport Strike, which grants facing teleport. When he uses it, and moves five turns or less. After resolutions, he may make a close attack. Okay. Looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of stealth, followed by a few clicks of flurry, full run of blaze claws, fangs, full run of combat reflexes, and then we've got a few clicks of exploit weakness. Okay. All right. Mix that with that uh, teleport strike. Hey, you can potentially get six clicks, six penetrating clicks of damage. Just saying. Next up, we've got Longshot. Longshot here comes in at 50 points. He has the Excalibur, Exiles, Mojoverse, X Factor, X Men, and Celebrity keywords. We also have a Rally trait. We have a Rally trait. Uh, when he makes an attack, you may 
uh, replace a die in the attack roll with his rally die. His rolls of uh, ten of two of uh, double fi of two fives are critical hits. Okay. Looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of ring shot, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. So an incapacity, followed by blaze cause fangs. Energy shield explosion, followed by super senses. And a full run of the special damage power. Born lucky, I guess. Probability control. When long shot is the target of an attack, he may use it regardless of range and line of fire. Protected, outwit, and pulse wave. He can prob pulse wave attacks. You heard that right. Probbing Pulse Wave. Yeah. Anyway. But he does, he does have to be a target of the Pulse Wave. So if you're smart, you'll make sure he's never in range. Of, uh, he's never within the range of a, for a Pulse Wave. Next up, we've got Polaris. And again, we, get, we finally get a new sculpt. And I actually really like that sculpt. Um, it it actually, uh, to be fair, the old sculpt wasn't bad. It just it was used for seven years straight. So yeah. Anyway, Polaris comes in at thirty five points. Has the X Men team ability, as well as the acolytes, Horsemen, Star Generals, X Factor, and X Men keywords. We have a rally trait. Um, as a free action, you may remove her, her rally die. To knock back a character within range and line of fire five squares in a direction of your choice. Okay, I like that. that that's actually re that's really cool and does make her very useful. Looking at her dial, we have a few clicks of sidestep followed by a couple clicks of stealth, a full run of telekinesis, and a full run of energy deflection. Hey, for 35 points, you're not getting much, you know? Next up, we've got, well, Polaris' daddy, Magneto, and let me just say, I love this sculpt. I absolutely adore this sculpt. It is awesome. So Magneto here comes in at uh, 40 points. He has the Acolytes, Polarity of Mutants, and Hellfire Club keywords. Um, we've got a trait. Oh, he also has the Brotherhood Team ability. Recruiting soldiers in the war for mutant supremacy. At the beginning of the game, you may replace up to five friendly characters with the same number of characters from your sideline on their starting clicks. All replacement and replaced characters must have the Brotherhood of Mutants, Acolytes, or Hellfire Club keywords, and different names. The total points of the replaced characters can't be... can't exceed the total points of the replaced characters. Okay. It's basically forming the new Fantastic Four, uh, but with Brotherhood, Acolytes, or Hellfire Club. Oh, and there's actually quite a lot of options, especially for all three of those. Not so much Hel acolytes, but especially Brother and Hellfire Club. So there are a decent number of acolytes out there, and we did pull a few. So, or we we pulled well, we got Polaris. Um, okay, so that's the only one we pulled, but there are others in the set and others in as well in um, X Men Animated. Anyway, looking at his dial, we have a full run of sidestep on speed. A couple clicks of telekinesis on attack, followed by a couple clicks of energy explosion. On defense, we open up with this, we have a full of the special power magnetic shielding, which is barrier and energy deflection. Friendly characters with a shared keyword within range and line of fire can use energy deflection. I like that a lot. And finally, we have a full run of leadership on damage. Next up, we've got Professor X. Xavier here comes in at 25 points. He has the X Men team ability, as well as the Illuminati, X Men, or Shi'ar, and X Men keywords. Um, got a rally ability, uh, which grants leadership. Um, when he uses it, you can, re before rolling, you can replace the result. You can remove his rally that he used as a result. Next, we have a, another trait recruiting for a future threat. It's the same trait, it's the same, it's just like uh, Magneto's. Uh, recruiting soldiers in the war for mutant supremacy, only focusing on uh, X Men, Shi'ar, and Illuminati keywords. And funnily enough, thanks to Avengers Black, to the Black Panther Illuminati set, we've actually got a decent number of Illuminati uh, characters. Looking at uh, Xavier's dial, we get a couple clicks of stealth, followed by a couple clicks of sidestep. On attack defense, we've got a couple clicks of combat reflexes, followed by a couple clicks of super senses. And on damage, we have a couple of things about wit. Now, you might be wondering, 
why doesn't he have mind control or better chance of blast or anything that really kind of hints at his mental powers? Because this is supposed to be Xavier in the direct aftermath of House of M, in which he lost his powers. Hence the fact that he's standing. In World War Hulk, um, Hulk offered to remedy that, by the way. Anyway, moving on, we've got Callisto. Callisto here comes in at 35 points. Has the Underworld team ability as well as the Excalibur, Hellfire Club, Morlocks, and Ruler keywords. We also have a trait, White Knight of the Hellfire Club, which grants some power. That came that that definitely came in handy Sunday, I'll tell you that. I will definitely say that. Looking at her dial, we get a few clicks of stealth, followed by a couple clicks of flurry, a full run of blaze claws fangs, a few clicks of toughness, followed by a couple clicks of combat reflexes. A few clicks of uh, shape change followed by a couple clicks of exploit weakness. Okay. Honestly, not bad. Um, the only thing I would have changed on her is I'd get her some movement attack somewhere. Um, maybe trait the uh, stealth as well, you know. So, you know, a trait for, you know, some along the lines of hiding in the tunnels, stealth. But, uh,. You know, and then replace the stealth with some charge, but that's me. Anyway, moving on to our next figure, we've got X-23. So X-23 here comes in at 80 points, or or 50 points. Has the X-Men team ability as well as the Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, Assassin, and Martial Artist keywords. We've got a trait, built to be the best. Toughness, at the beginning of your turn. Heal X-23, one click. Okay. Looking at her dial, we open up with a special speed power for most for yeah, most of her dial. Um, nature and Nurture, which grants uh, charge and stealth. That thing gives way to a few clicks of uh, sidestep. We got a four on Blaze Claw settings on attack. We got a, a little more we got four clicks of combat reflexes on on defense and a few clicks of super senses on damage. Or on defense to sort of wrap things up. Nothing on damage, sadly. Anyway, moving on to our next figure. I'm going to say, I like that, uh, I'm liking that X-23. Moving on to our next figure, though, we've got Lilandra Naramani. Empress of the Shi'ar Imperium. And lover of, uh, Professor X. So, Lilandra comes in at 50 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Imperial Guard, Shi'ar, Star Jammers, X-Men, and Ruler keywords. We've got two traits. First off is Star-Crossed Lovers. When adjacent to a character named Professor X, both characters increase their leadership roles by plus one. Okay, I like that. I, I should re no, legitimately like that. Um, Sharon Carter and Captain America have a similar one. The Sharon Carter from Captain America and the Avengers. I so yeah, I'm, 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 I'm digging that. Next up, we have Majestic of the Shi'ar Empire, which grants the leadership in Mastermind. When Little Andre uses the leadership and succeeds, you may instead generate a Shi'ar soldier on click number one. She also has a unique modifier. Friendly characters with a Shi'ar keyword that occupy or are adjacent to one or more Shi'ar flag light, light objects modify defense by plus one. Okay, all right. Like I said, there are there are things that do key off of it. I don't think it does any, anything. I think it's just a light object, but yeah. Anyway, looking at her dial, we have a few clicks of uh, running shot followed by a couple of clicks of sidestep. Nothing on on attack for a while, and then on the last two clicks we got some blaze claws fangs. On defense we got some toughness followed by super senses. On damage we open up with probability control, which is always useful, and follows up with a few clicks of empower. Okay, all right. Well, that's gonna be uh, useful. Next up we've got. Hepzibah. Again, I do kind of feel like the Star Jammers should have been waited on, but to be fair, how I would have waited would, would have been to take them out of uh, House of X and put them in, uh, in the, take the House of X versions out of House of X and put them in Rise and Fall. Which then could have given us a Pyro, uh, it, a Magic, uh, a few others that weren't done for some reason in uh, House of X. Anyway, hmm. Hepzibah comes in at 40 points. 
has the Star Jammers, X Force, X Men, Animal, and Pirate keywords. She has the Salvage ability, just like Raza, as well as a, a trait Resurrection of Corsair. Once per game, when a friendly character with the Star Jammers keyword would be KO'd, instead you may turn them to their last non KO click, then roll a D6 and heal them half the result. If you, cho if you choose another friendly character for this effect, after resolutions, turn half spell to her last click. Protected Pulse Wave. Okay, so if she's. If if it's their KO, it, you can at the very least use it on her if she's KO from a pulse wave. From pulse wave, I'm not sure if it, if you could use it with another friendly character if she was unaffected by the pulse wave. But yeah, looking at her dial, we get some uh, charge followed by a couple quick of sidestep, full run of blade claws, fangs on attack, followed by a full run of super senses on defense, and nothing, sadly, on damage. Next up, we've got Blink. It has been a while since we've seen Blink in Hero Clicks. Since the Deadpool set back in... 2012? 2013? Something like that. Anyway, Blink comes in at 60 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the... <gasps> We got a lot here. Age of Apocalypse, Exiles, Generation X, Gene Grey School of Higher Le for Higher Learning, New Mutants, Utopia, and X-Men keywords. We also have the Rally ability. Um, when she makes an attack after res resolution, you may remove her Rally die to place her or a hit character up to five squares from her current square, or from their current square. Okay. Then we have a trait. See ya. Wouldn't want to. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Facing teleport. When Blink uses it, she has passengers three but only to carry friendly characters that share a keyword with her. Okay, all right, and see, so she's got some, she's got quite a few keywords. You're not gonna be hard pressed to find three characters in the set that she shares a key, that she shares a keyword with. I think it'd be easier to, you might have an easier time, it might be harder to find uh, characters that don't, but I mean, there's still some that here that do, but yeah, anyway. Looking at her dial, we get a few clicks of running shot, followed by a few clicks of toughness. We get a few mid to late dial clicks of uh, Blaze Claws Fangs. Defense, we've got a few clicks of initial deflection followed by a few clicks of combat reflexes. And on damage, we have a few clicks of leadership. Okay. Next up, we've got one of the rare primes, actually. Omega Red. Omega Red here comes in at uh, 60 points. He has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Weapon X. X-Force, X-Men, Assassin, and Soldier keywords. We also have a trait, this makes me happy. Giant Reach 3, Flurry. When Omega Red hits, all hit characters modify attack and damage minus one until your next turn. Okay. Looking at his dial, we get a couple clicks of, we get a few clicks of special speed power. Ah, do not be sorry, comrade. We transcharge, sidestep, and plasticity. Followed by a few clicks of sidestep. On defense, we are on attack. We open up with some blade cells, fangs, followed by steel energy. Defensively speaking, we open up with toughness, which then gives way to combat reflexes, which then gives way to the special defense power. My hell was puppies and the rainbows. Disgusting. The stop click and grant some super and grant some combat reflexes. Then on damage, we open up with nothing for the first half now, but on the back half, we've got probability control. Next up, we've got Mr. Sinister. I. It's so simple, but it's it's just it's sinister. It, it's that is that is the encapsulation of Mr. Sinister. It embody it. It's, it's a perfect embodiment. It, yeah, that sculpt is ah, chef's kiss. So Sinister comes in at eighty-five points or forty points. He has the Hellions. Horsemen, Marauders, and Weapon X keywords. We got two traits. First off, my own clone bodyguard. During force instruction, you may choose a character on your start starting force that is less than or equal to Mr. Sinister's point value to be Mr. Sinister's clone this game. The clone gains all of Mr. Sinister's keywords. Okay. Ha-ha-ha. Um, next trait. Mr. Sinister's deal on a game that don't allow for wild cards. Whenever an opposing character uses the wild card, uh, or the team player wild card ability, 
After resolutions, deal that character one penetrating damage. Ooh. Now, wild card abuse isn't as widespread as it, as it was 15 years ago, but it's still... It, it, it's not it's not as abusive, but it's still there. Anyway, looking at his dial, we open up with a click of stealth, and we get a few clicks of sidestep, followed by a couple clicks more of stealth. On attack, we open up with penetrate second blast, followed by a few a couple clicks at the end of uh, incapacitate. On defense, we open up with invulnerability, which then gives way to a couple clicks of uh, regeneration. On damage, we open up with a special power, master manipulator, which grants leadership and mastermind and, and outwit. When Sinister uses Leadership or Mastermind, the clone is considered to be adjacent if it's within four squares of Mr. Sinister. Okay. That then gives away to a couple hoots at the end of just regular outwit. Moving on to our next figure, we've got the Shadow King. Shadow King comes in at 100 points even, or 40 points. Has the Brotherhood of Mutants. Dark X-Men and past keywords, as well as improved targeting in North Hindering Terrain. We also have a trait, All That Remains. Shadow. Mind Control. When Shadow King uses it in hits, after resolutions, deal him, heal him one click and give each hit kicker a servant token. More on those later. Looking at his dial, we get a full run of phasing teleport as well as a full run of penetrating psychic blast. On defense, we open up with special power for most, for the vast majority of his dial. And I will be its king. Toughness, mastermind, but may choose a non-attacking opposing character with a servant token within range to become the target. If you do, after resolutions, remove that character's servant tokens. Okay. His range, by the way, is eight. That then gives way to some right to re regeneration. And then we have a almost almost full run of outwit as well. Okay. Not bad. I mean, I. He's, I'd definitely use him for 100, for 100 points, yeah. I, in fact, there were some some of my group actually su suggested I should have used him on some, uh, in the sealed event. And to be fair, I probably should have. Moving on to our next year, we've got Beast. The, the dumbest smart smart guy in the X-Men. The dumbest smart, uh, smart person in the X-Men. So, Beast comes in at 60 points, has the Defenders and X-Men team abilities, as well as the Avengers, Defenders, Illuminati, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, X-Force, X-Men, Animal, and Scientist keywords. We also have improved movement, ignores elevated terrain. He has Rally, which grants about wit. He can remove his, and his Rally die can be removed for free to use out wit, even if it had already been used this turn. Okay. Looking at his, yeah, looking at his dial, we get a few clicks of charge, followed by a few clicks of sides up on speed. Nothing on attack. On defense, we open up some super senses, followed by some combat reflexes. On damage, we open up with a special power. A good strategy does more than a pair of fists. Close combat expert. Free. Remove, remove a rally die from a friendly character. If you do, give a rally die to another friendly character. Ah, that will be incredibly useful. We then That then gives away to some regular close combat expert. Okay. All right. Next, we've got... Warstar. Warstar comes in at 75 points. He has the Imperial Guard, Shi'ar, Armor, Robot, and Soldier keywords, as well as improved targeting. May make range attacks out of adjacency, including the target adjacent opposing characters. Finally, we also have a trait. Help, Cecil, help. As a free action, once per game, generate a Bene bystander. If Bene is KO'd by an opposing attack this game, Warstar has free, make a range attack with a range value of 6. Okay. Looking at his dial, we open up with a couple of clicks of charge, followed by a couple clicks of flurry, and then back to charge. On attack, we, all we've got is a couple of clicks of, of uh, quake. On defense, we open up as an impervious for a couple of clicks, and we get rest dial as a vulnerability. Then on damage, oh, no, wait. Uh, mid dial on defense, we have a special power. More than just a puppet, which means combat reflexes, combat reflexes and invulnerability. Then it's regular vulnerability. On damage, we have a full run of the special power, telepathic link, probability control, but can only target himself or Bene. Okay. And finally, our last figure for the video, we've got Angel, who looks fucking great. Just saying. I mean, wow. Angel here comes in at 45 points, 
has the Defenders and X-Men team abilities, as well as the Champions, Defenders, Horsemen, Jean Grey School for Higher Learning, X4, or X-Factor, and X-Men, keywords. He also has improved moving North characters, and he has Rally. Uh, and free, as a free action, you may remove his Rally die to move, move Angel up to five squares. If you did, after resolutions, you may choose a standard friendly character with the X-Men keyword he, he moved through during that action and place that character adjacent to him. That is actually really cool because he, I mean, you could, normally if you carry a character, they can't get, be given a, a non-free action. Well, a costed action. But, with that, since you're not carrying them, you are placing them, they can be given a costed action. Provided they don't have already have two action tokens. Anyway, that is going to do it for now. Uh, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. Uh, let me know what you think of the uh, the, the primer format. Um, like like I said, we'll be uh, getting into after after this we'll be getting into cracking these bad boys open. But uh, I, I think I'm kind of leaning towards that being a, a regular thing, is you know kind of a a primer so to speak to just kind of go uh, go into you know the very the themes of the set and anything I might might have picked up beforehand. But uh, anyway. Um, this is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying live long and rock hard.